So the sunken place is real and clucking like chickens is totally a thing. Hi, I'm Rev Shell. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a metaphysical minister and we'll talk a little bit about what that means. I am a family constellation facilitator and I'm a clinical hypnotist. Um, by the end of this video, I am going to help you uh, dispel some of the common myths about hypnosis and make you a believer in the transformative and reshaping power of hypnosis and what it can do for your life. So stay tuned. So before I get to the good news about hypnosis, I'm going to ask you to take a second, subscribe, hit that button, hit the bell. You're going to want to know when I have new videos coming out. So go ahead. I'll give you a second. Good. Okay. All right, here we go. So hypnosis has a very provocative relationship with mass consciousness or the uh, information that's out there in the ethers about what hypnosis is and what hypnosis is not. So movies portray hypnosis as this mechanism of mind control and it misrepresents it in a way that um, makes people believe that with hypnosis you can bypass consent. Um, it's widely been known more for its entertainment value rather than its therapeutic uses. And not to be funny, but if one more person asks me if I can make them cluck like a chicken, I'm totally going to make them believe that I can. Because I'm a hypnotist. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, there's lots and lots of myths out there floating around about hypnosis, what it is, what it isn't. And so I'm here to help set the record straight. And I wanted to share, as I get comfy, I wanted to share the five most common myths about hypnosis. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Myth number one. Myth number one is that when you're in hypnosis, you don't have any control over what happens to you. So there have been lots of studies on this topic and not one of them has shown that someone in hypnosis or in a hypnotized state will act against their own best interest. Just to show how common a state of hypnosis is, you may have been in a recent state of hypnosis and you didn't even know that that's what it was or that's what was happening. So have you ever zoned out while you're driving and before you know it, you're at your destination? So you have no conscious recall over how you got where you got? Well, that's a form of hypnosis. So while your conscious mind was daydreaming, before you know it, you're at your destination and your subconscious mind was in this hyper state, hyper focused state of concentration. And while it was in that hyper focused state of concentration, it was in complete control. So while your conscious mind was somewhere else, wherever you were during that time, your conscious mind got you exactly where you needed to go. And that's how it is when you're in a state of hypnosis. Your conscious mind might be daydreaming, might be relaxing in a field of daisies, wherever I take you to relax, but your subconscious mind is doing the work. It's getting you where you need to go. It's taking you to the goal line of your hypnosis session. So that's myth number one. So myth number two. Myth number two says that you can be hypnotized without your consent. Well, let's just put it like this. So all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And um, let me kind of explain what that means. So you do all the work and I'm simply your guide to get you to that hyper-focused state of concentration, that really relaxed state in your body, but that subconscious hyper state of focused concentration. And you, in, in order to do the work that we came to do for the session, you have to be willing to work with me. You have to be willing to relax. You have to be, believe that you are safe. And all of that requires consent. No one can hypnotize you without your consent. There's no magic teacup. There's no spoon that when tapped three times sends you to the sunken place. Now, when we started this, I did say the sunken place is real and it is. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But hypnosis must be a consensual partnership or else it's just a waste of your time. It is your subconscious. Nobody else has access to it but you. Even I, the hypnotist, don't have access to your thoughts or your deepest, darkest secrets. Now, many people have asked me if I can make them cluck like a chicken or bark like a dog, and some of this does happen with like stage hypnosis and that hypnosis that most people are familiar with. But when you think about it, volunteering for a stage hypnosis show in and of itself is a form of consent. So. There you have it. Myth number three. So myth number three says that a hypnotist can read your mind and they will know all 
of your secrets. Now, true story. I had somebody approach me one time to possibly do some work, but they were concerned because they had a military clearance that because of their military clearance, they needed to wait until they were after the, or out of the military or they were done with their clearance or the work they were doing that required the clearance because they thought that I would be able to go in and read all of their thoughts. So I just want to again say it, it's your subconscious mind. And unless you tell me your secrets, I can't know them. In hypnosis, in trance, you won't say or tell me anything that your subconscious truly does not want me to know. So you get to keep your secrets. Now, some of my clients have experienced a tremendous amount of trauma in their life, some deeply wounding events. And the goal in working with me is to stop responding to the triggers of those subconscious events. I can help them do this work to be able to move forward in their life without ever having to know the details of that trauma. And so you get to keep your secrets and I only have to know as much as I have to know to get through the session and as much as you wanna tell me. I can't read any more than what you tell me. Myth number four, and this is one of my favorites. Myth number four says that hypnosis leaves your mind open to dark energies, spirits, or the devil to enter it. And so I thought it would be best to answer that myth with scripture. Now at one point, uh, maybe a whole nother life ago, um, I was actually studying to be an evangelical minister and thank God that I got away from that. And actually came full circle, minister, not evangelical, metaphysical, whole different end of the spectrum. But I say that to say that I know my way around the Bible. And so I want to just attack or I want to address that myth with scripture. And so 1 Peter 5, 8, it says to be sober minded, to be watchful, that your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And so if hypnosis is a concentrated state of focus, then how much more watchful and aware can you be? So myth number five. Myth number five is that hypnosis is a cure-all. And while I would love it to be, that's just not the case. Hypnosis is a very powerful tool to help you release deeply held subconscious beliefs and triggers. But it is not the cure-all that many people hope. It's not a magic wand that I can just wave at you and excavate things from your mind that you don't want to be there anymore. Hypnosis is an adjunctive tool that pairs really well with other holistic or traditional mental health tools. So my favorite holistic trio is systemic family mapping, family constellations, and clinical hypnosis. Now family mapping and constellations heal the systemic issues that go on in a family while I use hypnosis to work on the personal subconscious triggers, the personal subconscious blocks that you have that may come as a result of the systemic family issues that you might be carrying. That's the work that I do. So many of my clients, I work in partnership with their other holistic practitioners or their traditional therapists, um, and it's specifically around times where they reach plateaus in their traditional um, treatment plan with their therapist. Sometimes they'll come to me, we'll work through a few blocks on a subconscious level, and then I send them back to their therapist ready to go to the next level of their care. It takes more than one session, but when you stay the course, when you do the work, when you take the suggestions, when you're truly invested in the process and you're not expecting a one and done, you can realize some deeply, deeply transformational results in your life. I hope you found this enlightening. I hope that I was able to dispel the five top myths that exist out there about hypnosis. And I told you that I would talk about the sunken place. So let me tell you about the sunken place. The sunken place is actually a real place, but it's not a real place that was as it was described in the movie Get Out. Now, while that movie was fabulous, uh, Jordan Peele's one of my favorite new uh, directors. Um, well, Jordan Peele's one of my favorite directors. He's not new, he's been around for a while. But the horror work that he's doing, totally my thing. Um, but what, what they did with Get Out and the techniques that they use, the techniques are real. The, um, uh, the, the teacup with the spoon, um, that's a technique to tire your senses and help you relax your eyes. It's a very real technique, but minus or absent consent, that tapping 
that telling you to drop, outside of consent, none of that will work. And so understand that. The sunken place is this real gooey, like warm, comfortable, deeply relaxed state that you get into when you allow yourself to um, relax, to feel safe, to be deeply, deeply committed to doing that inner work that you came to do in hypnosis. And so is the sunken place real? Yes. Is it real in the way that it was portrayed in the movie? No. The sunken place is that place you go inside when you feel deeply relaxed and safe and ready to allow your subconscious mind to do the work that you came to do in hypnosis and in this session. So I hope that answers your questions. Um, if you would like to reach out to me, all of my links are gonna be down below. I would love to hear about any other myths. So maybe in the comments below, you can write a, um, uh, maybe there's a sixth or a seventh or an eighth myth that you've heard about hypnosis that I would love to address. Make a comment below. And um, if you have any questions, leave them too. I'd love to answer them. Also make sure if you didn't earlier when I asked you to, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you hit that bell. You're going to want to know when I have new videos come out because I have some really exciting topics that I'm going to talk about. So subscribe, share, tell your friends about this. So thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. Uh, we will be putting out a new video every week. So come back and um, let us know what you think. Bye.